Okay, so we've done the electric field due to two charges, and this is just a special case of that. This is called an electric dipole. So a dipole consists of two charges that have equal and opposite values separated by some distance s. And you may think, who really cares? Well, everyone cares. Because it turns out that the dipole comes up a lot in nature, and in real examples we see this a lot. One of the cool things is this dipole has no charge. Overall, the net charge is zero, but it still makes an electric field. Um, here is, just, I'll just do a little sketch. Maybe, maybe I should draw these as better lines. This is uh, the common field map you see for a dipole, and it looks like the, uh, the field due to a, a bar magnet, because that's pretty close to a dipole too. So we could calculate the field anywhere. I could calculate the field right here. It's just the sum of the electric field due to this plus the sum of the electric field due to that. So this would be, that one's going down because it's towards that one. E, I'll call that E minus. And then this one's going away and smaller, E plus. Those are the two vectors. And then I'd add those together and I'd get something like this. So you could do that anywhere. But we can actually get an expression for the electric field on the axis parallel to the dipole. We could also get an, an expression for perpendicular. I'm going to do this one. And I'm going to make an approximation for when it's far away, a distance r away from the center of the dipole. So let's find the magnitude of the electric field along this axis. Um, and then we'll make a simplification. Now first, let me just draw this. So here is the electric field due to the positive charge, E plus. And then I have the electric field due to the negative charge, E minus. Now, the positive charge is closer to this point. So the magnitude of the E positive is going to be greater than the magnitude of E negative. So overall, this will have an electric field. The total electric field will be in the x direction. But this tells us something important. Now I don't really have to deal with this as an x, I mean as a vector equation. I can write this as a one-dimensional equation, which just makes our calculation a little bit easier. But you don't have to do that. So let's write the expression for the electric field in the x direction due to this dipole a distance r away. So I'm going to say ex is going to be the electric field due to the positive charge. So it's going to be k times q times, and this is just in the x direction, it's positive. Now what's the distance from here to there? Well, here to there is r, and this distance is s over 2. So this is going to be r minus s over 2 quantity squared. That's it. Now I have to add the electric field due to this. This is going to be in the negative x direction, so I'm going to say minus k q, and this distance is going to be r plus s over 2 quantity squared. So this is the answer. Okay, but now let's see if we can get a simplified version of this. So I'm going to start over here and say ex, I'm going to write it like this, k q times, because that factors out, 1 over r minus s over 2 squared minus 1 over r plus s over 2 squared. Now I have, uh, I want to get a common denominator. So if I multiply this fraction by r plus s over 2 squared over r, r plus s over 2 squared, and this one times r minus s over 2 squared over r minus s over 2 squared, then I get a common denominator of k, q. So this one's going to be r plus s over 2 squared. And this one's going to be minus r minus s over 2 squared. I feel like I'm making an error, but I don't think so. And then it's going to be r minus s over 2 squared, r plus s over 2 squared. Again, no simplifications yet. Okay, now I'm going to leave this bottom like that, but I'm going to, I'm going to factor out this top. So I have k times q. That's a k. So I get r squared, and I'm going to get r times s over 2 plus s over 2 times r, so it's just going to be plus rs. And then I'm going to get s over 2 squared, so it's going to be plus s squared over 4. That's that. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I have a minus sign, so I'm going to get r squared, but then I have a minus sign, so I get minus r squared. And then I'm going to get r times s over 2 plus negative s over 2 times r, so I get negative 2, negative rs, but then I have a plus right, another minus. So I get plus rs. And then I get s over 2 squared, because the, the negatives cancel, but then I have a negative. So I get negative s squared over 4. And then all of that over r minus s over 2 squared, r plus s over 2 squared. Now you see we get a lot of cancels. Cancel. Cancel. And then I have rs, rs, so I get 2rs. So I get k q 2rs over r minus s over 2 squared r plus s over 2 squared. No simplifications. This is exact. Now, suppose I am in the situation. Let me rewrite this. So we have e x k q 2 r s over r minus s over 2 squared r plus s over 2 squared. Suppose r is much greater than s. Suppose I'm very far away from the dipole. Well, not even very far away, but just far farther away, farther away. In that case, I can make a simplification. ex is approximately equal to, well here I have, if r is greater than s over 2, and I square it, this is going to be a small number, this is going to be a little bit bigger number, so this on the bottom is the approximately equal to, I can write this as k q 2 r s over, I'm just going to put this as r squared, and that is r squared. So now, and I get one of the r's to cancel, I get 2 q s over r cubed. And this is the approximate elect magnitude electric field due to a dipole, uh, so it's approximate, and actually they call this the far field approximation, because it's far away, uh, along the axis. Okay, but let's just check. Does it have the same units as the electric field due to a point charge? So here's a point. The magnitude of a point charge is k q over r squared. So it should have k. Oh, wait. k. Sorry. It's got the k. It should have q. It's got the q, and it should be over meters squared. So I have meters divided by meters cubed. So that works. Okay, now, as this gets really, as r gets really big, this should go to zero because I'm really far away from something. Uh, and so as r goes, gets large, yes, it does go to zero. Uh, as the distance between the point charges goes to zero, as they get closer together, if they're right on top of each other, the electric field will be zero. And yes, as s goes to zero, this goes to zero. So this is a good expression, and I think we are good. And that is the electric field due to a dipole. Now, but what I want to do next is to take this expression and compare it to the exact expression and plot both of them and see how closely they match up. And I'll do that on the next video.